Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I create aging skin and glasses. Be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, for the outline I'm using a 708 Carbothella pencil. The method I'm using is a quarter grid, just helps out a little. But after this quarter grid, when you've been doing it a while, you're just left with a center point then. That's how I learned how to do freehand. Now you start off with the big shapes, getting familiar with the whole of the image. So you spread the vision out so you can see everything. But you've got this advantage of shapes that is created within each square or rectangle so basically all you're doing is doing it very lightly to start with using the eraser to actually shape the lines so you're sort of sculpturing your way through I tend to keep the reference image small enough so i can see the whole image that way it I get the overall feeling of it and more of a balance of the shapes. Now I'm checking one shape against another shape on a vertical and a horizontal plane. I tend to go with my instinct rather than trying to draw every detail exactly the same. If it doesn't feel right, it just needs attention. So that's what I'm going with my gut feeling. I'm connecting, bringing the image into me rather than me going out towards the image and that way it keeps everything nice and relaxed and straightforward. I have got quite a few videos now how to draw the outline freehand. So if you want to check those out, here's a couple of examples here on screen. Be sure to check out the link in the description below if you want to know more about those outline videos. Now for the underdrawing, here's a selection of pencils I'll be using for this. Starting off with the glasses then, just making sure the shape of them is correct because that is all crucial really when you're doing glasses because if they are out, it's going to throw the whole picture. So really just pay a lot of attention really just to make sure the shape of the lenses and the rims are correct because it will make a difference. Just going through with the white and just keeping it simple really, just using brown and blue rather than black uh, just to get the dark areas in. Uh, but when I go over this with the rich colours then I can just correct everything then with the correct value. Because this stage is not about getting the value right, it's all about getting everything in the position right and just recorrecting everything I've done on the outline so I'm reshaping things and all I'm concerned with is just making sure everything's in the right placement so when I start putting those rich colours on I can just relax and enjoy adding all those subtle colours so I'm just adding pigment on the pastel mat just to give it some sort of vehicle then for when I do start putting the rich colours in so I'm keeping it basic using white warm red yellow ochre and then uh, olive green and then brown just to sort of simplify the colors uh, just to get the basic sort of structure there so in a nutshell really with the underdrawing it's just just shaping things up with the white and then just glaze over them with colors um, just to get something down some simple form just to get the idea of where everything's gonna be uh, and that's all I do really. It just makes the next days quite enjoyable because all this mapping out and all the preparation is done so you can just relax and really enjoy piling in the colours then. Just going to speed this section up now so I can concentrate on slower footage for you with the rich stage and the detail stage. So visually you can see what's happening here. It's the same things we've just mentioned, just keeping things nice and simple using just two or three different colors and then just basically getting that structure right, redrawing the outline, making sure everything is fine. In fact, what happens is on every stage, I'm always drawing, always correcting, always measuring. And I try and become 
connected to the reference image by opening my heart and letting go of the mind and tr focus on everything being one rather than just loads of different details just everything's just a oneness so when you actually see the picture when it's finished you'll feel the energy rather than the details and then you'll have a look around once you've sensed it if you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos Right, here's a look at the rich colour pencils I'll be using from Karen Dash. And then the colours I used earlier. And then just showing you the whites I use. Faber Castell, Karen Dash and Carbofella White. And this is a dark skin tone, 5% from the Karen Dash range. This is the start of the rich colour stage, so it's all about getting things fresher, more vibrant, that's the chroma, and then the values and the feeling more. So I'm, I'm really sort of connecting to the energy of the person I'm painting, uh, getting deeper colours, so you can see now I'm using darker colours. Now for the white of the eyes, I'm using orange and blue, which is a great combination, especially for teeth make beautiful greys, blue and orange. So I'm putting that in and then just generally working through um, just altering things but not interested in trying to get the details in at this point. It's all about getting that block in more richer, vibrant and the balance of the values there. Now when you're doing the chroma, when you first put that bright colour down it's quite rich so to desaturate that you just put the green and blue together and then just add that little bit of more chroma add that lemon yellow and so you're backwards and forwards using that green to desaturate the red and orange with the blue now i'm putting subtleties in there by using a five percent flesh tone dark flesh tone from karen dash i've not used that much i've started using it a bit like a little bit more now uh, and that's really handy pencil but it's just a case of building up that texture and uh, just keep working on the whole like I say it's just a blocking so I'm not really fascinated by the details at this point that will all come later I'm using a Karen Dash Brown here it's 408 uh, it's really a deep rich colour and then I'm using a Faber Castell White for the brightness because that's really fresh and then just glaze over then with the lemon yellow and a warm red to create sort of a glow and that's what I'm doing for the rims there for the brightest highlights I'm using the Rembrandt stick there pure intense pigment and then I'll just move it around then with the Faber Castell so first thing to do is just put some pigment down just spot it and then move it around with the pencil and for the blocking I'm using the olive green and brown it's a similar color to what I'm looking at I'll put that sort of final finesse later on in the details but it's just a matter of just getting that sort of blocking getting more of a correct value so we're just working through all these different areas now this part of the rim I've used 10% flesh tint from Karen Dash, it seemed to work pretty well there. Started to put the hair in now at this point, just using brown to start with, just keep it simple, just putting that bit more depth into it, then using the white to sort of remap things out. I noticed one of the lenses were out, it should be close to that other lens where it can see it's quite a bit out there. So what I did is just use the white just to reshape it. I'm always comparing, no matter what stage I'm on, I'm always checking one place against another, just re-changing it up, keeping it fresh, um, so I don't get fixed into certain things. I'm always sort of looking at the whole and correcting it if I need to. So that's how I work. At this point in the study I decided to get this rich area done so I'm using the Karen Dash again flesh tint 5% and 10% and then the pink white here really rich in vibrancy and really helps them when you glaze over the top with the other colours I used earlier it creates that sort of right feel. Just to mention again that this is a block in of a rich colours just so I get the right value and chroma before I start putting details in. I always think that there's no point putting loads of detail in an area if it's wrong because when you start doing the other things 
it might not be dark enough or it might not be light enough. So I tend to like to wait till the end to put those really fine subtleties. But these get more and more refined as I go along. So I might work on one area, then go to another area before I can get that right feel to the area I was working on originally. So it's backwards and forwards and working on the whole picture really. And it's quite nice to have that freedom and not be stuck in one spot. But that's just how I like to to sort of create things is to create that sort of energy so when you do look at the picture you look at the whole thing not just one area just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for their wonderful support every month i can't thank you enough I really appreciate it if you're considering joining me on patreon and would like the benefit of longer slower and more in-depth videos please check out the link in the description below for more details now I'm doing a squint in my eyes just to see the values and comparing one value with the others on the portrait, or the study in this case, just to make sure everything sort of balances up. Now I'm using blues to create a colder red and also using lemon yellow to create more of a zingy red, uh, but then desaturating it with green. So, because it's the complementary color, but then I'm getting those sort of details in by using that dark flesh 5% from the Caran d'Ache and then just change it up. So if you've got a colour which is very similar, it's always best to use it and then just change it up with these sort of primary colours on the top. Now I build all these layers up very lightly so it always keeps tooth there to actually put these layers on creating texture. So I'm putting lighter colours on and then glaze I'm using that dark flesh tint 5% to add the little bits of uh, wrinkles here and there, I'm glazing over with the lemon yellow, um, just mixing it all up and just letting it happen. Just get a feel for it and you'll, you'll just get a sense to know what colour to put on and mix with what you need to do. Being aware of the temperature of the hip red pink color uh, sometimes it could be cool or, or warm so if it's cooler i add the blue if it's warmer i just add a little yellow ochre or lemon yellow if you would like to know more about our mixed shadows i have got a free class for you the link is in the description below if you want to check that out after the video and it will give you more insight on how i use the complementary colors to change things up tip to help you to see the colour is to open your eyes wide to see the colour and squint them to see the value and that will give you an idea of the subtlety of it as well. Just slowing it down to real time just to show you how I create this sort of vibrancy through the skin tone. Now I'm using a pink white here but it's not actually pink white in that area but if it's got that sort of glow I needed you see and the yellow were too yellow so what I used was the light pink and then I'll put a slight bit of yellow on top of that and that'll change the colour just to what I want. What I tend to do is think so many moves ahead really, so I use what I've got and then just change it up. Before I can do that I've got to do the, the area around it, so what I'm doing now is putting the warm red in there, because it's like a yellowy red zinginess to it, so I'm using yellow ochre. And putting that over the whole thing just to get some sort of feel for that sort of colour. And and just keep changing it up. That's the only thing is just keep putting these layers on. Keep changing it up. You see that pink white now has changed to a yellowy colour. And that's just the colour I wanted. So just play and, and just enjoy and just see what develops. Are you surprising? you know, what comes to you and you think, oh, that's interesting, I'll use that again or I'll do that again. That's the only way to learn is to jump in in the deep end sometimes and just have a go. And it's fun doing that because you just don't know what you're going to sort of come across and uh, uncover for yourselves. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me because this would help the channel to grow. Now for the shadows, I've not made it as dark as what the reference image is because sometimes when you take a photograph it makes the shadows darker than what it is in real life because when you paint something from or draw something from life there's a lot more subtlety and feeling in the shadows so that's what I've tried to achieve with this study 
is not go so dark but try and bring out some of the subtleties more so you can see them. Now for the detail stage, now I'm doing the highlights first, finding the brightest bright and then just going round and keep looking in the mirror a lot and just to see overall what needs to be subtled up and refined. And what I tend to do as well is really open up and, and focus on how the subject feels and try and create that oneness I mentioned earlier. So I'm not trying to put loads of detail in one area, so I have to be careful not to make something really detailed that the eye goes straight to it. So I want the eye to actually feel the portrait, not to go straight somewhere. I know, you know, most artists say that there should be a focal point, um, but I like to get the energy so people feel the subject. Because when you first meet someone, you don't look at the details of what the hair is or the skin, you see how they feel and how they make you feel and then you have a walk, look around then and, and have a look at the details and what have you. Um, but initially it's that feeling of the energy. So that's why I'm focusing on here, just making sure that everything feels right. And within those details, there's a feeling of a oneness, a feeling of sort of, um, it's hard to put in words, but if it doesn't feel right in a certain area, I just work on it until it starts to feel right. So I don't go with how it, how it looks and start thinking, oh, that don't look right, and I need to sort that out. So I keep the mind out of the way, and all I'm doing is sensing, if does this feel right? If it doesn't feel right, keep working on it until it does feel right. And you notice you, you go in one spot and then you'll feel that you need to go somewhere else uh, because you're noticing something don't feel right when you've altered something else. So it's a constant sort of flowing around the portrait until it's finished. Slowing it down to real time now so you can see how I'm doing these eyebrows. I'm using the dark flesh tint 5% from the Caran d'Ache. It's close colour to it. Like I say, if you've got a colour which is very similar, use it. But I still need green to desaturate that because it's like a pinky colour. And then I'm using the edge of the point to find the fine lines. Now if you keep turning your pencil, especially if you sharpen your pencil with a knife, there's always a little bit of an edge. If you can keep turning it, you'll find another edge. And that's how I get these sort of fine lines in here. And once you've mapped them out, just change them up again with using red, brown, green, all sorts of different colours because you just find a pencil that has a similar sort of tone and then just change it up. A bit of real time here, just showing you how I'm using this cotton bud in areas just to soften the edges because when you're doing the details, you're looking at the, the value, the chroma, the temperature, and also the edges. It's very important to get the edges right. So some edges are softer, some are sharper. So you have, just have to use, you know, like a colour shaper or that sort of cotton bud in a bigger area. Thank you so much for watching the video right till the end. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. It means so much to me because this will help the channel to grow. And if there's any questions at all, just please leave a message in the comment section below this video in YouTube and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, if you want to watch any more of my work, please check out this video here. Take care. Bye for now.